وأقول في القرآن ما جاءت به آياته فهو الكريم المنزل وأقول قال الله جل جلاله والمصطفى الهادي ولا أتأول الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على عبد الله ورسوله نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Today we're going to start a new segment and this is the last uh, section of the course and the topic is the topic of Silatul Rahim keeping ties with family members and uh, after we've now talked about uh, we started with marriage and then children and then parents so as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said Thumma Adnaka Adnak then the closest one and then the next closest one so the natural way to branch out now is to look at the wider family members and to look at the topic of Silatul Rahim if you do have questions you're more than welcome to ask them uh, related uh, to the material that we've done in the Muslim family course by emailing questions at amau.org and make sure you put the Muslim family in the subject line inshallah and we will make at least one episode at the end inshallah to cover the questions that people had about the course bi'idhnillah al -kani. So the topic for today is Silatul Rahim, keeping ties with family members. And this word is made up of obviously there's, there's two words, this phrase Sila and Rahim. So how do we, or what is the meaning of each of those, uh, of each of those words? So uh, first of all, uh, Rahim, Lughatan, uh, linguistically, it refers, of course, to the womb. The word Rahim, it refers to the womb. However, it is then used, the word is then used after that for anyone that you have a tie to through your mother or father. Anyone that you have a tie, like a blood tie to, blood relations. That's what the word Rahim is used for. And uh, we've heard that Allah is right in the beginning of the of the of the course. We spoke about how Allah Subhanahu wa Taala made uh, Bani Adam nesaban wa sihra, made for them a nesab and a sihr. He made for them ties through blood and ties through ties through marriage. So what we're talking about now are the ties through blood, and that is why it's used for al qaraba the people who are close to you from your relatives uh, who are related to you through blood ties through your mother or through your father and as for uh, a sila uh, sila it means to connect the word itself it means to connect from wasala yasilu it means to connect and uh, here the scholars they say that they give it by example. They give, for example, the example of a ziyara wa tawasul and the example of uh, infaqul mal, spending on them. They give the example of visiting them. They give the example of communicating, staying in touch with them. So, how do we define exactly what is meant by the sila, the keeping ties? How do we, we've got some examples. Some of them say that it means to visit them. Some of them say it means to be in touch with them. Some of them say that it means to offer them money when they need it. Uh, so how do we actually define it? So here we can define it by مَا جَرَى بِهِ الْعُرْفِ What the urf de defines أنه صلة What people understand to be صلة that is صلة وَمَا جَرَى بِهِ الْعُرْفِ أَنَّهُ قَطِيعًا فَهُوَ قَطِيعًا And whatever the understanding or the urf of the people is that it's cutting off family ties, then it's cutting. Because here we don't have a clear definition for what is meant by الصِّلَة, by keeping the ties. So here it goes back to الْعُرْفِ It goes back to the matter of what people understand, what is commonly understood. So for some, in some societies, it might be commonly understood, for example, that certain relatives, you, uh, you need to visit them 
let's say for example on Eid and that is considered Sila and if you don't visit them it's considered Qati'ah it's considered cutting off from them in other places a phone call would suffice the fact that you phone someone or you you know you have them on instant messaging you message them from time to time there's no strict definition but it is الْعُرْف, what the Urf uh, specifies I what people ما تعرف عليه الناس what the people come together and, and it's commonly understood that this is what it means to keep ties then that's what it means to keep ties and what's commonly understood that this is cutting off then that's what it means to that's what it means to cut off and that's why some of the scholars they said it is every action that you do towards your relatives that is considered a means of keeping ties and, and not pushing them away and cutting off from them. Sometimes this is by offering them wealth. Sometimes it is by taking care of their needs. Sometimes it is by serving them. Sometimes it's by visiting them. And sometimes it is by communicating with them. So here we have a comprehensive discussion. Every action that you do towards your relatives that is considered that is, is among the things that people consider to be keeping ties that doesn't cause them to be pushed away from you and doesn't cause them to be cut off from you sometimes this is wealth, it's money sometimes it means that when you know that one of them is in need or has a debt that you try with whatever you have not necessarily you have enough to pay it off but whatever you have to, to help them out financially sometimes it's that you know they have a need for something you know that relative, they, they need something and you go and you try to help them with that need. It could be any kind of need. It could be that they need to, to do something or achieve something or they're having a problem somewhere and you go to try and help it, try and solve it for them. It could be by serving them, i.e. I, when they come to visit you, by you uh, putting you know out food for them and uh, giving it to them and serving it to them. And it could be by visiting them and it could be by calling them or messaging them. And that's why even in this time, uh, the understanding of Salat al-Rahim could be affected by things like technology. Because before, it might be the case that perhaps a person would write a letter. Now you could communicate with, with even distant relatives instantly with great ease. So I would encourage people very strongly. SubhanAllah, we talk about the dangers of social media and we talk about the dangers of the internet. But there are some amazing abwab al-khair, means to good in the internet and social media. Use it to keep in touch with your relatives. Use it for salat al-rahim, for keeping in touch with people. They would say this person is a really good relative because we see them keeping in touch with us on social media. And, you know, they ask about us and so on. Perhaps they call us uh, or video conference or whatever it might be. Ultimately, Islam didn't put a specific definition for it to make it general for the things which people in your society, in your culture, consider to be Silat al-Rahim, consider to be keeping ties. Of course, that doesn't enter into the haram. Uh, there is no obedience to creation and disobedience to the Creator. And likewise, as we said, there should be no harm caused, which is a harm, a shar'i harm, should not be caused to the person through Silat al-Rahim such that he becomes poor, gives all his money away, and then uh, suffers because of it. But what people in the culture, in the society, typically consider to be Silat al-Rahim, that's what you have to do. So Silat al-Rahim differs from culture to culture. In some cultures, there may be a very strong uh, demand or very strong emphasis, and the, the expectations of the relatives are very high. And in other cultures, the expectations of the relatives may be very small. You know, maybe very small. Uh, it could be anything due to that things like visiting or going to a wedding when there is a wedding in the family. That could be a kind of Silat al-Rahim. Again, we can't go into the haram and we can't go into that which brings about extreme harm upon someone like he has to travel to the other side of the world and he doesn't have enough money to be able to do that. But uh, the if it's within the ability and it's not falling into the haram, for example, going to the weddings, Many cultures consider this to be a part of Salat al-Rahim. That if you go, if you don't go, it's considered that you are cutting off. It's a, it's a qati'ah. It's an act of cutting off, muqati'ah. 
it's considered that you're 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 cutting off uh, from them, and it may be down to the way that they are treated in the home. It may be down to how much you visit them, call them. So Alhamdulillah, the 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 the, the topic is one where there is flexibility. However, it is it's important that the relative doesn't feel like they're being cut off from. Know that within the limits of the halal and the haram, we don't want to fall into the haram and we can't obey uh, creation in disobedience to the creator. But we generally speaking, within the limits of what Allah has made halal, we don't want our relatives to feel like we don't keep ties with them. And no doubt the relatives are of different uh, levels in the sight of Allah Azza wa Jal. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us, وَأُولُوا الْأَرْحَامِ بَعْضُهُمْ أَوْلَى بِبَعْضٍ فِي كِتَابِ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ بِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ عَلِيمٍ Allah Azza wa Jal said at the end of Surah Al-Anfal that the Ulul Arham, the relatives, are of different types. بَعْضُهُمْ أَوْلَى بِبَعْضٍ Some of them are more deserving than others in the Book of Allah. إِنَّ اللَّهَ بِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ عَلِيمٍ So no doubt, for example, the parents, they have a place of precedence, as does all of those who are, have the title Al-Walid, Al-Walid like Al-Jad, Al-Jadda, the grandfather and the grandmother, and the brothers and sisters. They're not all, not everyone is the same. Your brother and sister is not the same kind of sila as you're gonna have for your relative who is your second cousin twice removed. No doubt that the two of them are not gonna be the same. وَأُولُوا الْأَرْحَامِ بَعْضُهُمْ أَوْلَى بِبَعْضٍ فِي كِتَابِ اللَّهِ The relatives, some of them have a higher status than others. They are of many different levels, each according to the nearness and each according to the society and the expectations and so on. So even your distant relatives, it might be something as simple as uh, being in touch with them over social media, sending them an occasional message, maybe a group uh, message where you message out to all your relatives, so hoping everyone is well, asking about them. SubhanAllah, small thing you do. And with the people who are closer to you, it may be that the expectations are greater. For example, siblings, brothers and sisters, the expectations may be greater and higher because ulul arham ba'dhuhum awla bi ba'd. Some of them are more important and more deserving than, than others. As for the obligation of Silatul Rahim, in the Quran and the Sunnah, the obligation of keeping ties with your relatives, Allah Azza wa Jal, He told us in Surah Al Ra'id, وَالَّذِينَ يَصِلُونَ مَا أَمَرَ اللَّهُ بِهِ أَن يُوصَلْ وَيَخْشَوْنَ رَبَّهُمْ وَيَخَافُونَ سُوءَ الْحِسَابِ Allah Azza wa Jal, He told us, those people who they keep ties with what Allah has commanded them to keep ties with. And here the scholars of Tafsir, they said, مِنَ الرَّحِمِ وَالْقَرَابَةِ from their family members the, and their, the people, their close relatives. They keep ties with what Allah has commanded to keep ties with. And they have khashiyah of Allah, so they fear Allah based upon knowledge. And they are fearful of a bad account. Until Allah said, They are the ones who will have the final abode of paradise because they keep ties with their relatives, and that's what Allah Azza wa Jal mentioned about them. And Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, He also mentioned later on in Surah Al-Ra'd, وَالَّذِينَ يَنْقُضُونَ عَهْدَ اللَّهِ مِنْ بَعْدِ مِثَاقِهِ وَيَقْطَعُونَ مَا أَمَرَ اللَّهُ بِهِ أَنْ يُوصَلْ وَيُفْسِدُونَ فِي الْأَرْضِ أُولَئِكَ لَهُمْ الْلَّعْنَةُ وَلَهُمْ سُوءُ الدَّارِ Allah Azza wa Jal said, those people who break their oaths to Allah after they had established Him. And they cut off the ties that Allah commanded them to keep ties with from the relatives. And they create cor corruption on the earth. They are the people who will be cursed and they will have the worst of abodes. And the, the fire of Jahannam wal ayyadu billah. And Jubair ibn Mut'im radiallahu an narrated from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that he said, لا يدخل الجنة قاطع that the one who cuts the ties of his relatives will not enter paradise. Will not enter paradise. And the narrator, one of the narrators from the hadith, he said that Qala Sufyan, and that Sufyan, he said, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, Ya'ni Qati al Rahim. He means the one who cuts ties with the family members. La yadhul al Jannah. They will not go to Jannah. Now, what does it mean they will not go to Jannah? Aqeedah of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah is that they 
will not be prohibited from Jannah Abad al Abad forever and ever. If they came with a Tawheed, they were people of Tawheed, and they fulfilled the minimum conditions to remain within Islam, they will not be prohibited from Jannah forever. However, they will be prohibited. They will be prohibited from entering Jannah with the people when the people enter Jannah. And instead, they will be punished to the extent that they cut off from their relatives. And no doubt, Allah doesn't forgive you, make a partner with Him, but less than that, He forgives for whoever He wills. And subhanAllah, this is wa'id, shadeed, it's a severe threat of punishment. لا يدخل الجنة قاطع that the one who cuts ties with his relatives will not enter will not enter Jannah and Allah Azza wa Jalla said فهل عسيتم إن توليتم أن تفسدوا في الأرض وتقطعوا أرحامكم أولئك الذين لعنهم الله فأصمهم وأعمى أبصارهم سورة محمد between ayah number 22 and 23 so what do you think will happen if you turn away you will Corrupt the earth and you will cut off the ties of your relatives. They are the people who Allah has cursed and he has made them deaf and he has blinded their eyes. And we have a hadith which explains this ayah from the hadith of Abi Huraira radiallahu anhu ardah. Annahu qal, qal Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, inna Allah khalaq al-khalq hatta idha faragha minhum qamat al-rahim faqalat. Allah created creation. And when He completed the creation, the rahim, the womb, I stood and said, هذا مقام العائذ من القطيع. In this place, I stand to seek refuge from the ties of the womb being cut. Allah Azza wa Jal قال نعم أما ترضين أن أصل من وصلك وأقطع من قطعك Allah Azawajal said, yes, would you not be happy that I will keep ties with the one that keeps ties with you and I will cut off the one who cuts off ties with you. And the rahim, the ties of the wombs of the womb said, bala, indeed. Allah Azawajal said, this is what you will, this is given to you. ثُمَّ قَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ إِقْرَأُوا إِنْ شِئْتُمْ فَهَلْ عَسَيْتُمْ the Prophet said, Then read if you wish. The ayah that we spoke about. That would you be. What do you think would happen? If you turn away, that you would corrupt in the earth and cut off your family ties. SubhanAllah. Allah gave the ties of the relatives such a position. That Allah promised to keep the ties with the one who keeps ties with them and to cut off from the one who cuts off ties with them. And Abi Huraira narrated from the Messenger of Allah وسلم, that he said, Man kana yu'minu billahi wal yawmil akhir fal yukrim daifah wa man kana yu'minu billahi wal yawmil akhir fal yasil rahimah wa man kana yu'minu billahi wal yawmil akhir fal yakul khayran aw liyasmut Huraira narrated from the Messenger of Allah وسلم, that he said, Whoever believes in Allah in the last day, let him be good to his guest. And whoever believes in Allah in the last day, let him keep ties with his relatives. And whoever believes in Allah in the last day, let him say good or sp- let him say something good or remain silent. SubhanAllah. The Prophet وسلم, linked this to Al Iman Billahi wal Yawmil Akhir. That the Iman in Allah in the last day, you can't complete Al Iman. Al-wajib, the obligatory iman, until you keep ties with the, until you keep ties with your relatives. And Anas radiallahu an narrated the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Man ahabba an yubsata lahu fi rizqihi wa yunsa lahu fi atharihi falyasil rahima." Whoever would wish for their provision to be expansive, to be open out for them. Lots of provision, lots of wealth. And whoever would wish for their age to be lengthened, for their lifespan to be lengthened, فَلْيَصِلْ rahima. Let them keep their family ties. And the hadith is مُتَّفَقٌ عَلَيْهِ It's narrated by 
Al-Bukhari and Muslim. Just as we said with regard to the parents, this even includes the disbeliever among the relatives. Amr ibn al-As radiallahu anhu narrates, Sami'tu Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yaqulu jiharan. I heard the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say openly, ghayra sirrid, without he wasn't concealing it. He said, Inna ala abi fulan laysu bi awliya'i innama waliyya Allah wa salihu al-mu'mineen walakin lahum rahimun sa'abulluha bi balaliha. Amr ibn al-As radiallahu anhum and narrates the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, he said, I heard the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say openly, not secretly, that the family of so-and-so are not my awliya. They're not, they don't let them think that I am, that the family of so-and-so, uh, they have that connection to me. Rather, my wali, the one that I is Allah azza wa jal, and the salih of the believer, the righteous believers. However, they are my relatives. So I will keep the ties with them. This shows us that the Prophet ﷺ kept the ties with the relatives, even though if those relatives were not believers. Even though Allah ﷺ was his wali and the believers, the righteous believers, they were his companions, uh, anhum. But at the end of the day, he still kept the ties with the disbelieving relatives. And that's why he said, وَلَكِنْ لَهُمْ رَحِمٌ But they have the ties of family over me. I will fulfill those ties that they have with me and I will keep those ties that they have with me because they have the ties of relatives over me even though they are not from among the Muslims. In the next episode, inshallah ta'ala, we're going to go on to talk about keeping ties with the one that doesn't keep ties with you and dealing with difficult relatives and whether we can take advice and guidance from the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ to help us to deal with these kind of situations. That's what Allah made easy for me to mention and Allah knows best. Wassalatu wassalamu ala Nabi Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Assalamu alaikum. If you're enjoying these videos and you'd like to keep up to date with all of the courses we're going to be running, make sure you head over to amauathome.com.